Thank him for the day we had Sunday and God just protecting everybody and giving us a good week and, and keeping everybody safe and just accomplishing his will in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, oh, we thank the Lord for touching Brother Nick. He had a procedure Monday and he's doing better. Amen. Thank, thank God for protecting us. Amen. Pray for these requests. We need to pray for uh, Brother Donovan uh, and his wife being away, that they'll be able to just be all right and, and not be too lonely for one another. <laughs> Amen. And, and uh, God, hurry, hurry up and get them together yeah, here. Amen. 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 All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank Amen. Him for keeping everybody safe uh, in the wreck. I tell you what, it could have been bad, but God really protected us. Yeah. And Amen. a lot of people on the road. Thank God we got a big God. Amen. 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 All right. Let's just praise Him today. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you tonight. And we thank you and praise you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy.
asking in the, the Lord's presence Amen. every Sunday. Hallelujah. I tell you what, uh, Wednesday, Brother Daniel uh, ministered for us and, and to us, and then Sunday morning, Brother Doug, and then Sunday night, Brother Smith, and I tell you what, we just had glorious services in the Just the presence of the Lord, God's goodness and mercy, amen. And I can truthfully say I feel refreshed in my spirit, and I just appreciate God's mercy, and uh, he's wonderful, amen. Who's got a good testimony tonight? Sister Janie? I want to thank the Lord that we're here together again. Amen. And I want to thank God for my pastor because he would use, he used pastor to, you know, to pray for me. And I was like, kind of feeling down, you know, but I was like, hmm, I'm okay, you know. But God knows, you know. And I'm glad that pastor obeyed the spirit, you know. He obeyed the spirit. And I also want to thank God because today in the afternoon, probably around 30, I had an encounter with God and I was talking with him and I was weeping before him and his presence yes, and I like he said you know what he rewinds he rewinds yeah. my life as I was a child I was born um, premature and I didn't think I was going to make it and then after that I had like uh, asthma attacks you know and I was like 11 or 12 years old, you know, and then, I mean, one after another, you know, I, I left home real young, and it was crazy of me, but, you know, I went through a lot, through a lot, through a lot, through a lot, and God said, oh, I'm with you. Yes. You know, and sometimes we uh, don't want to obey our parents. Right. At that time, I didn't know, you know, to honor your father and mother, you know, and you have a longer life, you know. But we were, I was being so hard-headed. That's what I said, Sister Jane. Only hot-headed. <laughs> <laughs> and I always used to be like that. You know, I was brought up to be that way because I was always abused. I lived in abusive, so many abusive relationships. So many. And there's a lot of things I can't even speak about that, but... God was with me. Yes. Amen. He rewinds our like a tape. Good. Hallelujah. Good. I got you through everything, you know. And look what you're at. Even though sometimes, you know, yeah, I'm falling short of the glory of God. And I said, Lord, please forgive me. Amen. I don't, I don't even deserve this. Right. I don't even deserve it. I said, and the way we treat you. You know, oh, God, yeah. the way we treat you, you know, we, how can I ever repay you? I can't Lord, even God, repay God. you what you've done for me. And at that moment, the Spirit allowed me to minister to my son. And, and I said, thank you, Lord, because I was able to minister to him. He was able to take something, and I knew it. <coughs> and I felt it in my heart that God was there. Hallelujah. And it's like I always say, how can we submit ourselves to our pastors if we don't even submit ourselves to God? God help us. And I, I thank God that, yeah, I made a lot of mistakes. A lot of them. And God knows that. And, you know, he forgets our mistakes. Yes, he does. He's, you know, even though we're not faithful, but he is faithful. Amen. He is wonderful. Amen. And I thank my pastor because God. Amen. Amen. I didn't even pay her to say all that. <laughs> Amen. Who's next? Brother Alvin. I love the Lord. I, I thank Him for saving me, sanctifying me, filling me with the Holy Ghost for every time that I've been able to feel His precious presence. Yes, sir. I was thinking about uh, Christ and the, and the price that He paid and that precious blood that we talked about it the other night. And, and you know, one preacher said one time, I, just one drop, you know, is, is all it needed in all. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't one drop that he gave. It was no. a fountain that yes, sir. flow from oh, the top of his head. Yes, and his oh, visage God. was changing. He was marred so bad you couldn't even recognize him. His back was ripped, ripped open and the blood was pouring out of him on judgment. Hall floor there. And 
Then they took him out there and they, they drove nails in his hands and his feet. He carried that cross, even though Simon the Serenian and helped him because it was too much for him. Right. right. The Bible even said before that, his sweat became, as it were, yeah. great drops of blood. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I thought all this blood for our sins, for our I'm healing, all. for Amen. whatever I need, for the battles that, that, that lie ahead, for, for the enemy that can't cross it. Yeah. And after he had done, paid all that price and yeah. bled out, you might say. Right. I mean, it was just, Horrible. he suffered without that Bible. said so he took it all the way out there, that lonely yeah. hill. Yeah. Yeah. But then... After he had done died, somebody stabbed him in there. Oh, God. And forthwith came blood and water. He was dead and he was still bleeding. For yes, sir. Sir. It's important. Yeah. He's done all he could do That's for it. us. Yeah. And I'm thankful for what he's done for me. It's more than enough. Yes, and I appreciate sir. the blood sacrifice. It's so oh, valuable. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. Some people think Stephen's death was without cause or purpose, but it was a great purpose. Amen. Amen. A great testimony. Wonderful, wonderful. The way God used it. But I'm telling you, our Lord and Savior, He paid it all. Amen. 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 Who's next? Sister. Well, I just like to thank God for His mercies and His grace. And the Bible says His mercies are new every morning. That's it. You know, um, there's a lot of things that we may face in life that we don't understand. But I was thinking earlier about the eagle. When after it's little, the eaglets, you know, get big enough to fly, he starts pulling those feathers out that make it real soft and comfortable right. and make it a little less comfortable, you know, so that they will get ready for that next step. And I thought, you know, if that's what God's doing to uh -huh. us, if he's making he's this wonderful. world yeah. not a comfortable, comfortable. place for us, so that we'll long to go home. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking forward to, to that day, oh, you know, like you were Jesus. seeing about, you know, that we, there is a... Uh, about the song now. It was just about it's over the glory land. Okay. You know, yeah. that we have a home to look forward yeah. to. We Amen. have a reward. And I want Amen. every day that I live to work towards adding to that reward. Yes. You know, because one day we're gonna we're gonna cast our crown at Jesus for the souls that we save. That's right. Amen. And I just pray that we can keep Thank our you, eyes Jesus. focused Amen. on the finish line, on the end, and on what's coming uh, ahead yeah. and not let not be distracted right. by the feathers that are coming out and the discomforts of life, but keep our eyes on the prize. Amen. 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 Grant it, Lord. Jesus. Grant it, Lord. Brother Nick. I thank the Lord for the man I don't see past. I truly love the Lord. I thank you for it. Uh, as I listen to it, what my brother was saying, you know, we forget sometimes so easy what he went through for us. Right. Lord forgive us. And, um, and I thank God for the, the prayers of the saints and yeah. the tonight. And I saw my doctor, he said, I'm glad you came in today because he did see something there. And I thank God for my doctor yeah. who truly cares for me. We have doctors that can't say they care, but they right. know. My doctor who cares. He went straight to work. He was able, whatever she saw, off of my throat to the point where. I, I didn't even feel much discomfort. Thank you. But I kept thinking about one of the names of the Lord at the night. He reminded me one of my names is Emmanuel. God is with us. Yes, amen. Amen. I will never ever forget that. Amen. 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 Peter. Good to have you worshiping with us. Yeah, amen. I want to testify because you know the Bible said you won because of the testimony. Yes. yes. And then that's good, brother. And the thing is, I had many trouble in my life in the past, and I didn't have no power to resolve it for here. And I decided to don't go to don't pray anymore to go to the church. But hey, one day I pray and I ask God, if you take me off for these issues, I'll be back in your presence. And yes. today I can't say like David, I'm happy when they tell me let's go to the church. Oh, Amen. Amen. Yeah, it was, I had like, some trade in the court, and then nobody could uh, do nothing for me either, my Tony, or because the law was strict and something like that. And the time was well going, going, and nothing was changing. And the day of my trade, my Tony came and just told me, you know what? <coughs> because they changed the law. Praise the Lord. 
wow, I couldn't <laughs> just oh. give it the head, the, the, the sight of God, and that, that day I decided to come back to this prison. Amen. 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 Thank God Jesus didn't change the law for us. He fulfilled it. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Good evening, everyone. Um, I wanted to just say, um, and I've been wanting to say for a while, uh, that it had been a while before um, I actually came back into the church. I've always been in church, raised in church, but it came a time when I had told the Lord that I, Lord, I just don't want to do church as usual. And it was just so usual that I was trying to seek and find God, but there was so much around me that didn't uh, seem like it was agreeing with that, mm -hmm. you know, that, uh, that cry that I had. And so I just began to uh, just be at home and allow the Holy Spirit to just teach me. And, and this had been going on for years before um, I was in Louisiana for about six or seven years. And I, again, the Lord had brought me back here, and uh, going quickly from that, I met <laughs> Weepia. Yeah. We met in the uh, Kroger's, and I had been asking, you know, just really wanting. I knew I said, you know, I need to be in fellowship. I wanted yes. to see that, and so um, I know that the Lord wanted that as well. So He allowed our feet to yes. pass, our footsteps yes. to pass, and. What I see is that um, I always say that not only does the Lord know the hairs of our head, but if right. one fell out, he would know where to right. put that yeah. one. Amen. You know, yes. he wouldn't put number three and number 42. He would right. put it right back right. where it was. So um, I thank God that he allowed me to be led here. And yes. it's, it's, it was like he, had, he just supplied me with even more thank of his you, love yes, since you. I've been here. Thank so you, I know that um, I was led by his spirit that I do know. Yes. And I thank God because for, you know, a lot of times we have a tendency to think that we can't hear God as much as we used to. But I realized what God was showing me in that was that even as children, when we are trying to train our children, you know, we're always on them. We're always, you know, trying to explain, well, this is what you do, this is what, you know. But then as they grow older, as, you know, in referencing to what you're saying, you know, he began to um, not have to just, you know, just have to be babied so much, right. you know. And he wants us to know that, okay, I've given you this, I've given you my word, so this is where I want you to refer back to. It's not all about just, always wanting to be um, headed, if you will. But I know at this stage in my life, and probably many of yours, is that you know God is wanting him, God is wanting us to take his word by faith. Amen. Not by just, um, okay, we heard it one time, but he wants us to live by faith. Yep. And so Amen. that's where I'm realizing that it's not that he's not hearing me, it's not that he's not hearing us, it's that he just wants us to take his word for right. what it is, Wait because it's, Amen. it is what it is, as yes. they say. So you know, I just thank God for placing me here at Harvest Time, because I see um, the Spirit of God is truly here. Yes. And I just, um, I'm just totally amazed every time I come that everything that I'm desiring of him, he is placing it before me, you know, right before me, and it's, it's, I don't even know how to explain it, but he is so, he's feeding me Amen. like you would not believe Praise what he's doing Lord. with Thank me. You. So I thank God that this is what he is doing, so I'm, I'm sure many of us as well. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. These are good. Sister Kelly, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Why don't we say happy birthday to her right in the middle of service. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to
And I lost my head. <laughs> no, I just want to thank the Lord for for a good day. Um, I had to go to Shreveport yesterday, or forgot to go to Shreveport yesterday, and work at the center. And I just thank God, you know, for the people that He's brought in to that pregnancy center. Yes. Um, we've had nurses leave their paid jobs. I have a professional counselor that could be out making lots of money, and these girls come alongside and they fulfill a need oh, at that you. center. And I remember when we set out on this journey, um, and I remember telling the girl that I worked for before before we started as our started our own pregnancy center. And I remember telling her, well if we pull this off, we'll know it's God, because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I've just been overwhelmed. You know, we have so much going on. We've got banquets, we've got a big move, we've got budgets and money, and I have no idea what I'm doing. You know, and yesterday I had to, I went to a dinner to speak for the pregnancy center, and there were all these politicians and big shots in the room, and you know, I thought I did not fit in here, <laughs> but, but um, God has helped us on this journey, and I was thinking of that scripture: "See a man diligent about his business; he shall stand before kings and not mean men." Right. And, uh, you know, I'm just thankful for the doors God has opened. We went from not knowing how we pay the bills there, paying it out of our own pocket sometimes, to God just providing and yeah. providing cool. and providing. And uh, I'm just so thankful. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I know he will. Yeah. And he's faithful, and I just love him. Amen. 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 And God brought them our way. Amen. Yeah. He brought all of us together for the good of the Thank kingdom. You. From Florida, from Louisiana. Can anything good come from? Praise God. He can do it, can he? Amen. All right, who else? Anybody want to praise the Lord? I don't want to cut y'all. Sister Carol. Healing my body and prevailed me this week and for each and every day. He's always there with us. Yes. Sometimes we may not feel him, but he's there. Yes. Yes. And sometimes yes. all we have to do is just reach out. Yes. Amen. We'll find him. I just thank my days with us. Amen. 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 You're next. These are excellent. I don't want to force you, but if you've got something you want to share, this is the time. All right. I'm thankful for the goodness of the Lord. Amen. I'm in the middle of a transition right now, um, and I'm thankful, I really am thankful for God's goodness. Yes. Uh, sometimes in life, you go through transitions. Yeah. Sometimes the transition starts and you praise God, it's one of them. <laughs> I saw a transition coming, and uh, I really am thankful for God's goodness. Amen. You know, He leads us and He guides us. Think of the song, He leadeth me, He leadeth me, oh, blessed thought. Oh, yeah. I'm thankful that God leads us. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm thankful that he's guiding us. Yes. Uh, the Bible says that he will order our steps. Uh -huh. right. yeah. And uh, I'm looking forward to what 23, 2023 is holding for, for me, myself, for our house, for the church. Because yes. it's, it's a transition time. Right. Yes. Amen. And transitions can be very good. And they can be very bad. They can... Be a time where God's blessings can just flood in, and they can be a time where the devil comes in and really tries to uproot. Uh, I'm thankful that God is good. Yes. yes. I'm thankful for transition time. Yeah. Uh, I want to be faithful in this, in, in these transitions, to to keep God first. Yes. Yes. Be intentional about not letting the devil take root in right. in the transition because right. it's very easy. Emotions are up right. sometimes. You know, things are situations are a little awry, and and not not letting the devil slide. A foothold in. That's right. right. Amen. That's good. I want to be purposeful to let God grow, draw glory yes. at the end of this. Amen. Knowing that for Praise Sister Kelly, she just said that God has led them and God has done this. It's not been hers. Right. It was God. Yes. And I want to be able to look back at the at the end of my life, at the end of 2023, and say, it was God. Yes. Yes. He can draw the glory from us. Amen. 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 Amen, sister. Angela. Well, I love the Lord, and I praise Him and thank Him for all His great blessings to me. Yes. Um, I've been thinking about what Brother Smith said uh, when he was preaching on Sunday night, and he said, 
if you're praying for rain, better bring an umbrella. And I thought, how often do we pray a prayer, and then we get up and we're like, well, that probably won't happen, you know? <laughs> and that's not what we're supposed to do. And I've been thinking about that a lot, and I just always uh, want to just be intentional, like you said, intentional about when you're praying, believe. Yes. If you're praying, you better be believing. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. 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 You're next. Lord, and I thank him for saving me through with the precious Holy Ghost. He's been mighty good to me. Yes. I just, I can't praise him enough. He's been so good. Amen. And Lord. I, I just want to serve him and be a, what he'd have me to be. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Brother Doug, you're way too quiet. Yes, Amen. Well, I like to try to let everybody else, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Brother, I was thinking just today, the Bible, I forget, I'm assuming it was David, but he said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined yes. unto me. He heard my cry. Yes. And then the Bible says, he also brought me out Amen. of a horrible pit. Yeah. He put my foot upon a rock and he established my goings. And then I got to look at it and it said, and he put a new song yes. of praise yes. in yes. my mouth. Amen. Yes. And then it said, and many shall see it. Yes, sir. Hey, Amen. How is somebody going to see a song, Brother Charlie? I don't uh -huh. know. Oh, hey, Amen. But I know one thing. There ought to be a song yes. in our mouth. Yes. Hey, Amen. Amen. And it ought to be something that this world can see. Right. Hey, Amen. We get to wondering how we're going to win souls. How yes. we're going to affect our community or our families. I'm telling you, that's a promise. I saw uh -huh. it just today. He said, and they shall fear and trust yes. the Lord. Yes. I want to get a song of praise in my yes. mouth. Bible and you see but 
God. Yes. Come on. Or, or, but the word of God. Yes. Have you ever really stopped and think oh, what it might mean to you? Oh, yeah. I was a sinner, but God. Yes. yes. Amen. I was a poor in spirit, but oh, God. Oh, yeah. I was dying, Thank but God. God.
know musicians every step. Amen. We need to know where he wants us to put our feet. I was thinking literally earlier in the service. Uh, I guess it was because of driving the truck. Uh, when I topped uh, the knoll there the other day before the wreck, uh, there was a good ways down at the bottom of it, probably 12, 1,500 feet. And uh, I looked back in my rearview mirror. I immediately put my emergency flashers on when I seen the bottleneck taking place and had no idea it, you know, it was anything bad going to happen. But uh, I'm telling you, I was thinking literally it could have saved somebody's life. Just me putting the emergency flashers on that event. You never know. I mean... Two or three different times, Sister Kelly could have been spared from an accident on the way from Shreveport. Yes. We don't know what all God's doing, but He's doing it wonderfully for His glory. That we may edify one another, that we may exalt and praise Him with everything that's within us. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, if you got your Bibles, uh, turn with me, if you will. Amen. To Ezekiel chapter 9. I want to minister to you tonight on everybody but them. Anybody but him. Everybody but them. And anybody but him. I praise the Lord. I felt more victory in my soul today the last three, four, five hours prior to church and I felt literally in a year and a half or two years. I just praise God for His presence, for His goodness and His mercy and what He's doing. Amen. And I believe it's because of your prayers and your preaching and your living faithful for the Lord that God is helping us all to be overcomers. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 1. Amen. Are we there? Amen. All right. Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 1. It says, He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lie toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand, and one man among them was clothed with linen, with the writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of God and the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let every eye spare, or, or let not your eye spare, Neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. And begin at my sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And I could go on and read uh, the next five verses, I believe, in that chapter. But I'm going to stop right there for now. And... Uh, then I'm going to go to, and uh, I'll come back and read some more later, but I'm, I'm going to read in uh, Luke chapter 23 and 18, and it's two verses. Uh, Pilate is delivering Jesus to be crucified, and he didn't like doing that, but uh, the people said, and they cried out at once, saying, away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas. Who for a certain sedition made this made in the city, and for murder, and was cast into prison. 
And basically what they were saying was anybody but him. Anybody but him. And then the thought that I woke up with immediately this morning, everybody but them. Everybody but them. And the them was my wife and I. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Amen. Brother Smith, will you ask the Lord to anoint this clay tonight? the Lord. I want you to know I am so glad and tickled that every one of you are here tonight and I believe we're all going in the same direction. Amen. Amen. I was preparing before this morning to preach on I was going to minister on prayer and early in the morning, I mean immediately within five or ten seconds of waking up, I felt the Lord's leading in this direction and he brought this thought to my mind everybody but them. Amen. We were at a uh, minister's conference, I think it was, maybe Pigeon Forge, I don't, I don't, and uh, we had gone out to eat with a group of people. We, the only ones we really knew was the pastor from Watauga and, and uh, his wife, and, and uh, there was about, I don't know, could have been 10, 12, maybe even 14 people there at that big table at the restaurant, and this one gentleman, uh, when the waitress come up, and uh, uh, she began to take and get ready to take orders. And he said, looked around, and he said, I want everybody at the table to be on my ticket. I'm going to get there. Everybody except them. And he pointed to my wife and I. And it was a little embarrassing, to be honest with you. You know, not that we didn't have the money to get our meal. But, I mean, if he's got that much money, he could have paid Seven dollars and fifty cents a head. You know what I mean. And spent another fifteen dollars, uh, but uh, he didn't. And thank God, there's a message that come yeah. up. Yeah. And it's not about. I don't know if I thought of it hardly at all since. But to everybody but them. And uh, I, I, I begin to think about taking and setting a mark upon the people. Everybody that's not sighing and crying. Yeah. What were they sighing and crying for? They were sighing and crying for the sin, the abominable deeds that was being done right. in Come the on. city, Come in on. Judah and in Israel. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Come on. And brother, I want you to know the angel, the Lord, he wasn't talking to a bunch of a novices or a bunch of wannabes, right. but these were some big people he was talking about. He said, I'll bring them, cause them, them that are in charge over the city. Amen. Those that have the oversight, those that have yeah. the power. Get them together. I've got something I want to say and some instructions. And I want you to know God is trying to give His people, amen, instructions in this yeah. night, yeah. in this day and hour that we're living in. And the instructions are to help us to draw nearer to Him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To be more a vessel of glory yeah. for the Lord. Amen. And right. He's got somebody that's there with an acorn yeah. ready to put a mark upon us. And that mark is, is a, uh, that Tav, uh, the last letter of the Hebrew language yeah. there, the, it stands for 400, if I remember right, or whatever. And, and uh, it just it, it had a, a meaning. Amen. God knew what he was doing. Amen. Amen. And uh, he was marking those that he was not going to slay. Yeah. That he was not going to destroy. Right. Amen. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh um, and that cry for all the abominations that be done yeah. in the midst thereof. I was praying uh, several times here in the last few weeks, but uh, I was praying. I don't remember what I was praying for. I was praying for the church. Usually that's what I always pray for. The church, God's people, our family, your needs, our needs. And all of a sudden I begin to just ask the Lord to, to touch us, to branch, branch out, help us. God, you can touch you can touch Arlington and you can touch right. Arlington and Maysville and Roanoke and Cleburne and Joshua. God, you can touch Texas and, and you can touch America. And, and God, you can touch every need that any of us have even before we realize that we've got a need. You know, you realize that there's nothing we can tell the yeah. Lord that you don't already know. Right. But uh, everybody 
a positive thing or a negative thing in your life, but it's going to be what you do with it. It's going to determine what it's going to be. It's going to be many times probably prior to it, even before you even have a chance to do anything with it, but it's what you've already been doing along the way. Are you really praising and magnifying the Lord? Are you really living a victorious life? You know, when that person cuts you off on the highway or, or gives you that special language that, you know what I mean, nobody likes to uh, see that sign language. Are you going to come down to their level and get frustrated and, and, and say, well, how dare them? And, and begin to be at odds with them? I want you to know a lot of times the ones that the devil's trying to make you to be at odds with may be the one that God is yes. going to use you to minister to yes. in the next yes. moment or two. Hey Amen. You don't know what they may be an accident. I've had cars speed around me and go just a mile or two up the road and they be in an accident, brother. And I'm telling you, it'd be a bad accident. I've had situations yes. to where people I've worked with, they treat me like a dog. But I love them and I care about them and I try to help them. But they were upset because I wouldn't give them a two or three gallons of antifreeze. They were upset because I wouldn't let them fill their truck up with diesel. They were upset because I wouldn't play the thief. Amen. And I wouldn't take part in their in their covetousness or whatever. But brother, I'm telling you, several of them have been to this church. Been to this church prior, mostly prior to my pastoring. Amen. But they came. And why did they come? Because everybody but them. I wouldn't like the rest of them. Right. Yeah, that's right. I'm come on. You, like come on, brother. Yeah, come on. There were some professors, but there were very few possessors. Yes. And I'm telling you, the world we're living in today, we need to get to the place to where we are so humble and so broken before God to where we can be a vessel. I said something yeah. to Brother Young here two or three weeks ago when they were leaving and church is already over and, and I said something to him and I didn't mean anything bad at all. I've said it and I'd like to be myself. Be a good donkey for the Lord. Come on. I was thinking about Balaam. I mean, Balaam, brother, I'm telling you, that donkey saved his life. Yeah. He still didn't realize. I'm telling you what God was doing. God was trying yeah. to get him. Yeah. Amen. To have a reset in his life. Yeah. God was trying to get him to minister oh. and be ministered yes, to sir. to God. Yeah. Make it glorified. But Balaam went on and he went about still to do damage and destruction. That's right. Mm -hmm. Why? He said, if you give me, if, if, if uh, the king give me the half of his kingdom or the half of his house and yeah. goods or whatever, in gold, I'll not do it. I'll not say but what the Lord says. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of Christians. There's a lot of Sunday school teachers. There's a lot of preachers Come and on. pastors. Come on. There's a lot of people, brother, that have sold out. That's right. They sold out, brother. I'm telling you, somewhere along the way, they got their eyes off of the prize. Oh. They got their eyes on some goods that was temporal, yep. that wasn't going to accomplish and bring them what they were really looking That's for right. in life. And it wasn't going to help them in eternity, That's but right. it was going to do great damage to them. Yeah. And anything the devil does to steal, kill, and destroy in your life, Always realize it's affecting others as well. Okay. Amen. In the full life study Bible, I believe it's the fourth verse here. It said, God commanded that only those who remain faithful to him and his word. Amen. They were to be spared from coming judgment. Their loyalty to God was determined by their love for righteousness and their grief over sins being committed around them. Amen. How often is sin going on all around oh. us? And we're just looking around and pretending like we don't notice. And it may be to the point to where we've got so callous that we really are not even, not even noticing. But I remember when I came from OBI, I was here driving south on Cooper Street and somewhere about 303. Brother, I'm telling you, I was just weeping before the Lord driving down the road. Why? Because of the sin and the degradation yeah. that I saw everywhere I turned. When I looked to the right, it was there. When I looked to the left, it was there. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you. 
letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Tav, the oldest form of this letter is said to be in the shape of a cross. Amen. God wanted some people that was going to grieve over sin. When they saw it, they weren't just going to be unmoved, brother. But I'm telling you, they wanted that he wanted somebody to have a true saving faith God. and a true knowledge of what God had done in their life. Do you realize the pit? Somebody said earlier that God pulled you out of. Do you realize how bad you were slippery and going down that slope toward hell? Do you realize, amen, that your thoughts were continually upon evil all the day, just like most of the world that was around us? And God, but God, God,
different ones that have in my phone. I write their name down. Thank you. I kind of sit out there sometimes watching, hoping I get to see them. One of them is like Scion or whatever, and I can't remember, and there's too many things I've added for me to find it. But what I'm trying to tell you is you need to be praying. Yeah. yeah. For people yeah. and things and needs. Amen. I know you know this. This is basic. Brother uh, uh, Brother Smith said we need to get back to the basics. We need to get back to the basics. And that's pretty well what this is, brother. And I'm telling you, when God first saved us, do you remember how light you felt? I mean, that was the best night we ever went on. Brother, we were carrying a load that was way, way more than any power. Ten pounds of sugar. Brother, it was a load of sin that was weighing us down. And when we got through with it, we couldn't help but feel better every part of our being. Amen. Everybody but them. We're going to pray for everybody but them. We're going to pray for those that is going to have an effect on our life. Yeah. But I'm telling you, we need to be praying for more than our husbands and our wives and our kids and our neighbors. We need to be begging God, Lord, that if there's somebody across the seas that's got a need, God, speak to my heart. I may have never met them. I may not know the need, but I may be down praying. And all of a sudden, like a spirit of grieving and weeping begins to come over me. And I begin to speak in tongues. And just begin to lay prostrate before the Lord there. And brother, these muscles begin to tighten up. I mean, to where two or three days later, hey, you're sore because of the travailing that God puts me in. Why? Because there was a need. Them. Jesus. And anybody but him. But I want you to know God's wanting to minister to people. Our love and righteousness needs to be always faithful. And we need to have a hatred toward evil. But we should be growing in love and compassion toward those whose lives that we see sin destroying around us. I got a call today. And some of you know Carl, my friend. I've known him 30 years. Uh, Carl is really, Brother Alvin, the first time he saw him, probably, uh, he saw him, he said, that man's got problems. And that was, I don't know, three or four years ago. And Carl won't never see this. And I, I'm telling you, uh, I could tell him, and he wouldn't remember it. He's in such bad shape. But... The only time we ever had any grievance or disagreement was when I was talking to him and saying, Carl, don't you think you need to go be talking to somebody about your memory and just get it checked out and just just let, let God minister in maybe a different way and he don't go to doctors and this, that, and the other. And, and I'm not trying to talk down to my friend. I love him. I've wept and sobbed and sobbed and sobbed for him. I went behind him and paid his bills that he forgot. Well, today, there was another instance and something else happened. And, and Andrew went over and tried to help intervene and everything for it. And what are you saying? I'm trying to tell you that a lot of times God sees what's going to happen to us. And he's merciful enough to us to send us warning. He's merciful yeah. enough to us to try to help us. But a lot of times we don't hear it. I know that I've talked to people on the phone, amen, in the past few months. And, and they were people there, people that are not gossips. People that are not this or not that. They're not prone to be saying anything negative about anybody. But somebody roared up and say something that they didn't know was in the room. And ever since that moment, they've been different toward me. I'm talking about family. I'm talking about friends. I'm talking about somebody who knew me before I got saved. I'm talking about somebody that watched me change. Yeah. I've thought about talking to them and talking to them and talking to them, but I don't know how. I don't know if I need to. I just pray. Yes. But I've watched other things that God's showing me. Amen. That He wants me to look at and He wants me to let Him help me with. There can come a time in your life I want you to realize that you can realize it's too late for there to be the good outcome. That God was wanting to give you. Bill Gothard uh, used to talk about 
in the Institute of Basic Life Principles. He used to talk about the diamond in the rough. And he would show a man with a hammer and a chisel, and he would be up on that big, big diamond or stone rock, maybe before it was shaped there. And he would take and hit it, and it would break off and everything. And did you know as much as, even half, but as much as 20% or so is lost with that one blow of the hammer sometimes. Guys, with somebody here in our church, and we were driving not too often, long ago, and they very, very possibly kept me from being in another accident. How did it happen? I'm not sure. But I know one thing. I thank God that it happened the way it happened. Amen? Amen. In verse number 5, says, And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. That word smite means to basically destroy. Amen. Not just putting whelps on them. I looked it up and there was three words, but it basically is a very fatal judgment upon them. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and the little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. And God is trying to get something started in us. Amen. That'll bring a revival that's way bigger than what we've imagined so far or what we've thought about. I mean, do you realize the caliber of friends and people in the body of Christ that God is sending our way? Do you realize that people that are coming in, amen, they're going to be coming in and there's going to be worship services and these people haven't been raised in the Bible Belt. These people have never, maybe some of them have never felt the tug of the Holy Ghost about their heart or their life. But I'm telling you, God is wanting to do something. Amen. We've got to let the Spirit of the Lord move. We've got to give place, yes. not to the devil. Right. But we got to give place to our own heart to God. Yes. Let God do it. Yes. Let God accomplish what He's wanting to accomplish. Yes. Amen. And God always is looking for somebody to reach out and reach through to be a blessing to His kingdom. Amen. 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 Let those who have sinned most recently, those who have sinned maybe more often, those who have drifted the farthest. Those who knew better. Those who were willful in their sin and their hardness. Sin didn't just slip up on them. But they made the choice to go the wrong direction. Lamentation 3.22 says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, my set my soul. Therefore will I hope in Him. The Lord is good unto them that wait oh, for Him. Yes. To the soul that yes. seeketh Him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait yes. for the salvation of the Lord. God, yes. when you're praying and you're not feeling the, the glory of the Lord like you wanted to. It's been a long time since I felt the way that I felt since about 2.30 or 3 o'clock this afternoon on a Wednesday night. It's been a long time. I'm telling you, it's a good feeling. You say, well, Pastor, feelings ain't everything. No, but they're part of it. Amen. It's a lot better to feel good than feel bad. Amen. Do you, are you trusting God to heal you? Yes, I'm trusting God to heal me. I'm trusting God to do it. But whether I'm telling you, I really am not as concerned. Amen. As much about this as I am the spirit. Amen. That is overwhelmingly ruling this body. I want my body, soul, and spirit to be captive for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. God, here am I. You do it. Yes. You, yes. 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 you lead me, God. I'll follow you. Yes. Speak through me, God. I'll yield. Yes. I'll let you say. I'll, I'll weep. I'll rejoice. I'll laugh. I'll do all I can to be a light in this dark world. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city, and it came to pass while they were slaying them. And I was left that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Oh, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy poured out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? 
and said, hey, do you ever feel like God's just going to totally kill you? God's going to totally just annihilate you. I mean, do you ever feel like you're alone? Do you ever feel like that God's not done something, amen, uh, magnificent through you in such a great while? You wonder and you say, God, am I even saved? God, am I even? Is there something that you're upset at me about? God, you're not treating me like a child. You're treating me like a stepchild. I've never argued with God. I've never been one of these that could yell at God or shake my fist at God or, or get ignorant like that with God. But I'm telling you, I thought thoughts that were so condemning of self and so condemning. Is it I? God, is it me? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great. And the land is full of blood, and the city is full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not, he sees. He's not forsaken. He sees. Yes. He's still here. Yes. I remember, I remember, brother, I'm telling you, I remember I'd be over at the office, or really it was over here then, and I'd be thinking about it, and I'd be praying, and I'd come to the service, and I'd approach different ones, and I'm telling you, I'd say they're not alive. God's big enough to slay that problem. God's big enough. But brother, I encouraged, and I encouraged, and I encouraged, until I found myself, brother Smith, taking it home with me, and worrying about it, and carrying it, and carrying it, and I couldn't feel the Lord for days at a time. Hey, I'd pray, but it just seemed like empty words coming out. You don't always have to do a lot of repenting. Amen. Of necessarily of the sins of commission. The things you've done knowingly wrong. The choices you've made. Sometimes it's just things that's crept on you unaware. Sometimes it's just stuff the devil's laid on you just a little bit at a time. The little foxes. And they're gnawing away at the core of your very, very young. Yeah. And you don't realize what the nourishment is being depleted from you. And you've got to go back, amen, and let God do it again. You've got to go back amen. to the old paths. Yeah. Amen. You've got to go back and let God love you all over again. Yeah. What does that mean? I've never leaned on the bosom of Jesus like John did. But brother, I wonder how many of the apostles looked at him, amen, as he was there leaning on Jesus' bosom. Can you imagine seeing that sight? Can you imagine some of the folks that have been going through their mind about that time? But I believe there was some in their midst that says, Oh, if I could do that. Oh, if I could do that. And I pray, brother, that we'll get a hold of our thought processes in our life. Not just to give God just a mental ascent effort, but brother, so yield ourselves before the Lord that He's got the good and the bad and the weak and any good thing about us. And He realized He put it there. And He came that He's wanting to do. We say, God, here am I. Do it, Lord. Please get glory through us. And we'll give you all the praise and credit. And said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And the man clothed with linen, with the acorn by his side, he said, I've done what that mean, brother? That was great judgment. That came. Right. Great judgment that came. Why are we so urgent? Why are we so uh, we take this thing seriously? Oh. Amen. I take this thing seriously. Yes, sir. Amen. Because, brother, I'm not as young as I That's used right. to be. Why? Because I've lost many, brother. I've let them slip through my fingers. You say, well, it's not all your fault. No, it's not all my fault, but it's some of my fault. Yes. Right. yes. Don't you believe that? Yes. Yes. Don't you feel like when you go before the Lord, yes. you examine and say, oh God, could I have done it different? Yes. What could I have done different, Lord, oh, Lord? That these had not perished. What could I have done different than my kids? Yes. I'll be serving you with their whole oh, Lord. Oh. What could I have done different? What could I have given? What could I have been? What could I have prayed? 
Jesus. What kind of example could I have been? Oh, help us to hear it, God. Amen. Death is appointed to those who continue in trespasses and sin, and the Lord has no pleasure in the death of the sinner or the wicked, but rather that he turn from his wicked way. We must realize if he will not turn from sin, there's not much that remains except he remained dead in his sins. He remained dead in his sins. And his fate becomes more and more sealed and becomes worse and worse as he continues on that path. Everybody but them. Anybody but him. Do you know, I don't know if I've ever seen as many misunderstandings from the scripture, from the preachers, as I've seen in the past few months. I really don't. I know they've been there. But I'm telling you, I can't help but believe if some of y'all will get on the phone and don't hound them or drive them crazy, but Glenn and Lois, ring their bell. Ring their bell first on your face before God, crying out and saying, God, give me the words to speak. I don't know what kind of mood or mindset they're going to be in when I call if I even get them. Amen, Sister Jackie. Amen, Sister Brenda. Brother uh, Smith said, have your wife stand in for Brenda. Brother, I want you to know, since that night, Sunday night, I've talked to Brenda and had better fellowship than I've had in months. Thank you, Lord. Well, have you not been praying for her? Yes, I've been praying for her. Yeah. But I've been praying for her with, Brenda, are you still safe? I mean, what's going on? Are you serving God? I mean, where are you at, hon? What's going on? And she can feel that. It's an urgency. It's a desperation. Yeah. I'm not meaning to be judgmental. No, no, no. It's a gift. Amen. It's a gift Amen. from the first Adam. Yes, sir. Oh, Adam, the flesh. Brother, I'm telling you what. If we've not bowed down and cried holy, then yeah. that love is not going to be easing through our heart to them. That they may feel God's presence and love coming from us Amen. to them. Yeah. Amen. We've got to get to the place to where we don't just have a good start, but we let God continue to work. Amen. Will you give me another... Ten minutes? Yes. Amen. Yeah. Preach. Sin. Sin. Everyone that wasn't sighing and crying against sin and because of sin was destroyed. The guilt of sin should bring horrendous, horrifying fear of coming judgment. Yes. We need to realize God's trying to signal us and get our attention. My wife called me this afternoon and and uh, there was something on that, uh, I believe it was Tucker Carlson, and there was a preacher on there that was preaching. And I'm telling you what, what he was saying, you would have thought he'd have been shut up in the four corners of a church and had people praying and fasting for him for weeks. I mean, the boldness, the courage, amen, uh, the, 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 the lack of fear, the zeal, the anointing. It was there and it was prevalent, amen. But I want you to know, Guilt for sin begins to pass unless sin is dealt with. That's right. right. It don't stay there forever. No. We can continue to do what we've been doing. And it don't shake us like it used no. to. We get to taking it for granted a little bit and saying, oh, it's going to be all right. I'll pray next time and I'll cry and I'll feel God. I'll watch. I can, I'm telling you, I've watched people. I've watched them. Kneel down and pray for weeks. Every service, brother, kneel down and pray. For weeks, brother, cry and sob and weep. For weeks. And then what happened, brother? I'm telling you, in a week's time, they're out of church. They're backslidden. I mean, everything's split and being destroyed. What happened, brother? All the crying and all the sobbing and weeping. Something was being held back. Something was going on that... Brother Charlie couldn't see. Don't know about. It's not, I'm not a real curious person. It's not my business. I don't know. But I do know one thing. If I could some way pray better, if I could some way preach better, to get you to realize that one of 
of our loved ones could be in hell before morning. I woke up this morning and wasn't even out of bed. And I saw a big old line of cars in it. I didn't even think about it until just now this way. But it's probably because of the wreck that I thought along these lines. But there was just a big old line of cars. And I didn't even notice a wreck. But this person that Kayla used to work for, his name come to my mind. And somebody said he didn't make it. He didn't make it. I talked to him about his soul. But for the last couple of years, I've not been seriously praying for him anymore. I know God's the one that leads us who we pray for and who we don't. Amen. But we got to be sensitive. We don't want to forget that there's a coming judgment that's going to sweep over this world. And it's going to tear down the lies and the refuge. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them. Let's travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. Brother, I begin to think when we were, amen, pastoring our smaller churches and we were there, amen, early on just beginning and going along. When people come in, we were glad to see them. We had a burden for them. I mean, they wouldn't always look the part that we even knew they needed to look. But brother, we cared for them. We wanted to yeah. give them help. And I'm telling you, when people come to this place, they need to realize it's a spiritual hospital. And somehow the Holy Ghost needs to arrest them. Yeah. Hey, brother, I don't know what I say. I've got to be being sensitive to the Lord. Brother, if I say brother or sister, Am I paving their way to hell? Or am I trying to encourage them and trying to let them see that if they'll hang on, help's coming. Help's coming, brother. Help's coming. I'm telling you, God knows He's going to judge your heart. He's going to judge your motive. He's going to judge your attitude. He's going to judge where you're at and why you're doing what you're doing and why you're not doing what you're not doing. When you pastor a church as great and as large as this one we pastor, it's not often that I can preach without getting on some of you. We don't have any such custom. Amen. What custom are you talking about? It's a shame. If it's, if it's a shame for a woman to have long hair, how be it? If you're argumentative, a man to have long hair, yeah, there you go, thank you. But if, if, if it upset you, we don't have any custom. Now, God didn't say, I don't want you committing adultery. But if it upset you for me to talk like that, you go ahead and commit all the adultery you want. No, that's not what he said. He said, brother, it's not our custom. It's not the Christian's custom to get mad. It's not the Christian's custom to win an argument. That's right, brother. And lose a war. Yes, sir. Brother, you're talking about an eternity in hell. For that soul, unless somebody can get the message of God, the close to him to where they surrender and find him. Yeah. Please don't think I'm picking on nobody. I'm not. I'm just trying to share what God gave me. Amen. Relax and trust the Lord. Let God's love spread abroad from heart to heart. I believe every soul in this house that's serving God tonight, every one of you, I believe, has prayed for me at some point this week. Amen. I want you to know, Amen. unless I didn't think about it, I prayed for you. Amen. Why? Amen. Because we're a part of the body. Yes. Yes. We love yes. one another. We need one another. Yes. And we don't want any hardening of our heart. Brother, everybody's concerned about their arteries. They better be concerned about their heart. Yes. Amen. 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 There's no safe place where the sinner can run. That's right. Amen. They can't run to... When I... Prayed about and sought the Lord about putting holiness under the Lord on that sign out there. I knew it was going to make us a target. I knew that everybody wasn't going to look the part. I knew that I probably wasn't going to be by everybody's heart or standard. But I knew I wanted to be. I want to be. I want to be all God wants me to be. Yes, brother. Yeah. That's it. I don't want to get to heaven. Brother uh, Steve Holden preached that message and and said something to the effect he don't want to get to heaven. And God shared with him that he got 83 or 85 percent of his potential as a Christian. Right. Oh, I want God to give me souls. Yeah. Yes. Man, I want to travel down that highway, Brother Alvin and I have talked about it 
several times, brother, driving down, and it's a wonder you've been able to see the road, the tears. Just keep coming, flooding your soul. What are you doing? You're having fellowship with the Almighty. Hey, you're worshiping, you're adoring, you're, you're magnifying the Lord, the King of Kings and Lord of glory. Amen. Who is this King of glory? The Lord God mighty in battle. Amen. Who is he? He's the one that saved me and called me out of darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good. Amen. God help us, everybody but them. That's right. I don't want no exemptions. Anybody God brings through that door, my brother will not come in the place half clad and indecent. But I believe we've got some things we can help them with. Amen. I mean, brother, we've got a lot of things we can help yeah. them with. Yeah, amen. Come on. Let's don't close to them. Right, right. Let's don't get distracted to where we stop praying. I don't know if you notice it or not, but I notice it very, very regularly. When that kind of opportunity comes to the doors, there's a closing yeah. of the Spirit. Cool. What is it? Well, the Bible says, for without the foolishness of preaching. That's how they hear it, through the foolishness of preaching. Amen? Right. Right. we got to preach to people. They're going to be offended. They're not going to understand it. we got some people now that they're not coming to church because everything I preached the last two or three times I preached, I was preaching it directly at them. And I some of you were too. That's all I. Oh. Hey, think about them. Right. But I want you to know if the devil can get them to buy the lie. Uh -huh. right. What will keep them from buying the law? The lie, the more we pray. Yep. Yeah. The more we pray. See, we don't have a board up here. We don't want to see 38 go to 48, go to 52, and yeah. go in our foolish pride. Yeah, come on. We want God to make us channels for Him to flow through. God help somebody along this path. And brother, it concerns me that I get to heaven. And I don't have hardly anything at all to present to the Lord. Amen. Everybody but them. Amen. God, I don't want to cast anybody aside. Yes, sir. I can forgive. I can overlook myself, my family, whomever I want, anybody. Amen. But not them. And a lot of times everything was fine. I had an illustration that was in my mind, and I can't really remember it, but basically... It was somebody got busted because they did something out of line and they thought they got away with it and went home or something like that and there was that person that they had made an advancement to in their home, the wife, they just hired them as a new maid. Mm -hmm. Now that's kind of a predicament. I hope we got better character than that. I yeah. believe we do. Yeah, come on. That's not our problem. Yeah. We're not robbing and stealing and killing and, and perching or perjuring or anything like that. Right. But I'm telling you, we can be comfortable. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. We can be comfortable. Mm. God help us not to be comfortable. Mm. Amen. It's not them scratch our back and our scratch, us scratch their back. But it's are we praying for them whether we ever get a prayer in return or not. Yeah. God help us to not be hindered from doing our part as a child of God. Lord, everyone except for them. The crowd said, give us anybody yeah. but Jesus. Give us Barabbas. His blood be upon us and our family, our kids. Can you imagine? Yeah. Foolish, foolish words. God help us. They cried out all at once. Give us Barabbas. In Proverbs 5 and 12, I need to share some things. It was like 543 when God gave me the, the, the most of the rest of this. Proverbs 5 and 12 says, How have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Matthew 21 and 44 says, And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, 
but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. I don't want to be ground. No. I don't want somebody else to take my place worshiping the Lord. No. The next verse says, And when the chief priests and the Pharisees had heard his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. They perceived that he had their number. They perceived it. Remember me telling you about that time that I preached at a big church and they had a fancy, fancy evangelist quarters and had the book, Amen, in that fancy evangelist quarters and nine out of every ten big names that you know was there in the book. I didn't even really hardly entertain signing the book. It would have been such a distraction to some of them. But I kept telling the preacher, I don't need to preach. I didn't come to preach. I came for a wedding. I don't need to preach. And he went on and on and on. And then I got there for that service, and I didn't even have slacks on. I don't think if I did, I was not dressed up hardly at all for nothing. And he called my name and said, he's coming to preach for us. And I grabbed my Bible, and come down here in front of the church, in front of the pulpit, and stood here very humble. Didn't know how to handle it. But you know what I had? I had a message. You know why I had a message? Because those people had confidence in that shepherd. That shepherd was clueless what he had just invited to preach according to his standards. But I kept him ready. And God gave me a message. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, if you'll be ready, God will use you where God wants to use you. Amen. But even Jesus could not do a lot of things because of unbelief. That's right. We need to make sure that we're not saying everybody except for them. And we need to be careful that we're not saying anybody but him. I want you to know there's not a soul here tonight that I'm trying to probe or jab or do anything but help and be a blessing. I just want to be a blessing of God. I have no trouble loving you, caring for you. Heaven knows if I'm exaggerating the least bit. Amen. I want us to make it. Yes, sir. I want us to do everything God's going to help us to do in the kingdom. Amen. And if I don't do it just the way you do it, let's do it together prayerfully, trusting God to give the increase. Amen. Amen. And let's believe God that people will stop using that door as a revolving door. Yeah. Right. Pray that God will give your pastor the wisdom to lead and direct and help people Amen. where their need is. Therefore prophesy against them. Prophesy, O Son of Man, and the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said unto me, Speak, thus saith the Lord. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. God knows every thought. God knows deceit. He knows every thought. He knows love. He knows where we're at. Yeah. And you and me are big enough as Christians to know the things we need to be taking before him and praying about. Yeah. When I'm straining and I say something, I want you to know it needs to be said with a proper motive that God can bless. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen? And God's wanting to bless it. The Proverbs of Solomon, Proverbs 1 and 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtlety to the simple. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and the dark say, their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Verse 8 says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Proverbs 9, 9. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. 
Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. An ungodly witness scorneth judgment, and the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. I don't know or think or believe that there's anybody here tonight that needs these last two verses. But when I ran across them, there's people I know that could use them. God could let it seek into their spirit. Be careful what podcast. Be careful what you're listening to. Be careful where you're going, who you're running with, what you're listening to, what you're watching. Be careful what you're thinking. The instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Why? Because there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shine. And if God is leading you with any thoughts or direction, He's leading you to protect you. He's leading you that you might be a blessing. Amen. He's not trying to lead you so that the one that's doing the telling will lose change. All right. One was last week. That's two. We're still praying for one another. Yeah. We're still trusting God for truth to prevail in our hearts and our lives. Yeah. But you've got to receive instruction when it's the truth. You've got to get a hold of it. Because if you don't, why do I want the people on Sunday morning to be here on Sunday night and Wednesday night? Because they've got a far greater chance of getting some help. Yeah. Amen. We're laborers together. Yes. Amen. Amen. I love you and I appreciate you. I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for your confidence. I thank you for your love and your support. Amen. But I want you to know we've never needed one another like we need each other That's now. Right. Right. And if your family and your neighbors and your work co-workers and people are going to get help from you. This is going to be your church. We got a band together. Amen. We got to labor effectively as wise stewards. Amen. Amen. Because we've got an arch enemy that hates us. I know there's nobody in here that hates one another. I know we love one another. Amen. God help us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I trust that you're praying for my family. I trust that you're asking God to help. I never knew, amen, that my little family a few years ago would ever be where they are now. But they're there. Full steam ahead. We're running out of time. Yep. And I want them to be able to feel the love. And if they do get on, I want them to not be embarrassed, knowing that I never, never, never would try to hurt or embarrass them. But I want you to know I want you praying for them. Brother Nick, you don't have to worry about me praying for Takara with you. I'm praying for her. Brother, I'm telling you, it's, it, it's in me. I'm telling you, it's in me. I'm praying for Josh and Catherine. Uh, I'm praying for her. I'm praying for the ball going but then I'm praying for them. I'm praying for joy. I'm praying for him. Why? Because he's dear to your heart, brother. I'm praying for your family and my family. Because that's the only thing that's going to get them across the finish line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Glory. Let them hear well done. Amen. Thou good and faithful servant. Pray. Amen. And then when you quit thinking of things, just be still. Mm -hmm. And beg God to take over. Yes. Amen. And lead you and guide you. Amen. Amen. Sorry to keep you so long. Y'all have been so precious and wonderful, and I know you know just about everything I shared with you. But I wanted to just remind you to obey God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Would you stand tonight? Let's please continue to pray and seek God and the fasting that we're doing. I guess we're planning on doing it next month, going the same dates, unless somebody changed. I would like it would be better if we could take an at least initial, or if you'd let somebody know. Uh, you know, those of you that don't want to advertise that you're fasting, let somebody know if you don't mind.
what you got that way. If there need to be any change up or anything, there'll be some accountability and we can know. We won't advertise it or broadcast it or nothing like that. But God knows. Amen. And uh, let me tell you, church, God's working. He's doing great things. I can see progress. I can see Him helping us. If it's not helping anybody but your pastor, it's helping me be a better Christian. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we love you tonight. God, you know every need that's in this house, every situation that any home would be going through, God, family, friends, acquaintances, yes. neighbors, God, whatever, work, co-workers. Oh, God, I beg you to use us effectively, God, to bring Thank forth you, your pleasing, Lord, to where we can hear you in that day say, well done, yes. thou good and faithful servant. Yes. Oh, God, we want to make it, and we want to help others to make it. Yes. Please help us, Lord. Give us strength. Help us to humble ourselves before you. To be ready, God, to be sensitive to your leading. Oh, God, let us have a greater burden than we've ever had. Maybe even since we've ever been saved, God. Please do it, Lord. Protect our loved ones, I pray, and use us. Let this church accomplish what you want it to accomplish, and we'll give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' precious, precious name, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help all of us, Lord. Yeah. Everyone but them. And anyone but him. God, let us choose you. Amen. And the fellowship of your suffering, Lord. Amen. Lord, let us pray for the body with love. God, that when somebody has a problem, God, we don't have to worry. Is anybody remembering me? But God, we can know that they are holding me up. We love you and we praise you. Use us in Jesus' name. Keep us safe, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.